welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Modern, and at the request of Patreon subscriber Abe Alpha, this is Deploy the Gatewatch Planeswalker Control. I'm sure you're all looking at this list and asking the same question that I did. When Abe sent me this deck, I looked at it, and my question was, is this a deck that has been tested or played anywhere, or is this just a bunch of Planeswalkers with Deploy the Gatewatch in it? And I've been assured this deck has been tried and tested and tuned, at least as much as this can be. Abe said that it's been played in Legacy, and it's been played in Modern, and the singleton, just one of everything kind of Planeswalker setup, has tested better than multiple copies of just the best Planeswalkers. And that was enough for me to believe that this deck has been played before, and I'm ready to try it now. Very clearly what's going on here is Deploy the Gatewatch. It's collected company for Planeswalkers. White, white, four. Look at the top seven cards of your library, put up to two planeswalkers from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom in a random order. Just splatting out planeswalkers here for six mana. And the deck up to that point just plays other planeswalkers and ways to enable them. Delighted Halfling is a Birds of Paradise that makes that is also Caverns of Souls in this deck. Basically, all spells except for Deploy the Gatewatch are legendary. Oath of Nyssa, also legendary, which means you can cast it off the Lighted Halfling and Plaza of Heroes. Digs, and then makes all your mana basically five color lands. Sylvan Carrioted Ramps, Light Removal. And then at some point, we just cast a Planeswalker every turn of the game and make your opponent deal with that. I imagine there will be spots where some awkward stuff happens, like we keep a hand off of Halfling, it gets bolted, and then our hand is like Tamiyo Nahiri, six mana Soren. That's the fail case. But if we can do like Planeswalker on two or three, Planeswalker on three or four, etc., and curve out on Planeswalkers, that's a lot to ask any normal deck to deal with. Because normally Planeswalkers are used in modern as like, there's two of them at the top end to really drive it home once you're ahead. And most decks are not equipped to deal with, I'm near even in here, four, eight, 12, 14, 18, 19. 19 Planeswalkers with three more in the sideboard, 22 Planeswalkers. Most decks struggle to deal with the second or third Planeswalker, and we've got 22 of them. There's not a lot to say about this. Let's freaking do it. This is Alpha Abe's Deploy the Gatewatch Planeswalker Control. I'm on the draw in round one versus a Gigantha strategy. I'm going to keep my hand. It has one of my four removal spells in it, one of my ramp spells, and my ponder. Forest Oath of Nyssa keep. I'm only kind of joking, because Oath of Nyssa was banned in Pioneer for a while for being Ponder. Just actual friggin' Ponder. Well, this is a great hand to have Prismatic Ending in, because my opponent has a Ragavan. And if we have Gigantha plus Ragavan, what do I think this deck is? Maybe, like, Breach combo? Maybe Prowess? It's not Murktide, because Murktide costs blue-blue. Counterspell costs blue-blue. These lands cast Ren and Six. Oh, okay, it's just some zoo deck. Cool. All right. I mean, 4-3 is a lot of damage, but it's still some zoo deck. Oh, Gideon of the Trials, you don't say. I don't really want to take damage from Shocklands here, but in order to cast Halfling and Oath this turn... Oh, wait. Oath... No, Gideon's not the problem. Oath is the problem. Yeah, if I want to cast Halfling and Oath this turn, I have to... Oh, no, no, no. Gideon is the problem. Yeah, yeah, I can just fetch basic force. Figured it out. I probably should have oathed first so I could shuffle my ponder. Who am I just pondering poorly in modern? Wandering Emperor in the old Gripper Rooney. Ugin to the bottom. That's where I want it. I want that later. And now Delighted Halfling represents Wandering Emperor. Two powerful anti creature white planeswalkers in my hand versus this zoo deck. I'm going to take the four, though. They didn't have land number five, or land type number five. Well, they did have it, chose not to get it, which means they probably, okay. Yeah, they, they just missed the damage. Okay, I'll take it. I'm trying to deduce why they would do this. Turns out, doesn't matter. 
Oh, sick. They take the halfling here, and then I get to Gideon. If they have another brawler, it just doesn't matter. Oh, no. All right. Yikes. Come on, pain free land. Give me Plaza of Heroes. Tamiyo, probably not what I want in this matchup. Sucks I have to shock in all of these lands to, to do anything. All right, so Gideon can fog one of these brawlers one time. And then Gideon just dies to the other brawler, and I'm dead on the next turn. This does bridge me into Wandering Emperor, though. But I'm still under pressure from these 5-3s. And if they are a, a build that has Stubborn Denial in it, that's tough. Yeah, they're attacking me anyway with the, the Frozen one. Wow, they ignored Gideon. Am I just dying to Tribal Flames? Okay, I'm at 1. If they have Bolt, I'm literally dead now. All right, cool. Yep, ignoring Gideon's fine. All right, all right. I did deal five to myself with my lands that turn, or that game. Wrath of God comes in. Kaya gains life, and she can kill Ragavans and Wild Nicaddles. Chandra is a Wrath. Minus three, deal three to each non-elemental. That kills some of the things in this deck. Tamiyo does not matter here. Yeah, she doesn't impact the board. She's out. Karn is slow as hell. Ugin and Nicobolus are slow as hell too, but they do stabilize on arrival. Just got to find my worst Planeswalkers. Liliana Vess doesn't do anything versus Zoo. It's five mana to Raven's Crime them. No thanks. Nahiri's removal. I want all the removal, all the ramp, all the setup. Narsa does very little, but she is a slow dig through time that finds me other stuff. Removal, removal, removal. Card selection and card advantage. Removal, removal, removal. Blocks. What do you do? You can untap some stuff and gain two life. You can anticipate. Yeah, Teferi slows the subset. Gaining two life while not actually doing anything doesn't seem like the way to win this matchup. Okay, here we go. I'm in. Weirdly enough, we might have won that game on the draw. We were just slightly behind on mana development and shocking and had to fight off a creature every turn. I will keep this. Ariated is nice and sticky versus their deck. 03, Bricks Ragavan. They can't bolt it. No one drop from the enemy. I like that. Both of Nyssa lets me double spell next turn. Sick. Okay, I mean, this is a pretty smooth patch to deploy the Gatewatch. See if it matters. But I'm having a good time. Okay, this is Domain. This casts Kavu if they have the 5-5. Five five. They have Brawler. That's also 5 power. 5-5. Right, five five. This one doesn't trample, though. Plaza of Heroes. I like finding the land, because that means I can dig for a Planeswalker. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or I could dig for land 6. I'm going to use Plaza to cast Oath of Nyssa. Legendary spell. Okay, another Plaza. This gets me deploy next turn, which is all I want in the world. Just going to try to deploy the Gatewatch. I might even take a turn off, depending on what they do, because Gideon Jura destroys target tapped creature. I assume this Cavu would be tapped. I'm having a good time here. Plaza of Heroes taps for green right now for... Non-legendary things, most of which are already in play. Scion of Draco. Now this does have Trample. But I can also kill it if they tap out. They discarded a land. A Stubborn Denial is my nightmare. There's already a Breeding Pool tapped in play. How many islands could they play in their deck? I could use this opportunity to kick up this Shrine into play tapped, which I think I should do. Stubborn Denial is going to get me anyway, and I don't have to take this damage. Old Gideon Jura with this weird art. Let me tell you one of my cringest magic stories. Back when Gideon Jura was a standard staple, I traded a Savannah for two Gideons. That was a fair trade at the time. The reserve list hadn't spiked yet, and standard was in its heyday. Pretty sure I still have the Gideons. I would rather still have that Savannah. They were getting a fetch in response. Oh no, Steam Vents. The stubby D is going to get me. Yep. I was never, ever beating that card, basically. So now I take 9, go to 6, and I can deploy the Gatewatch next turn and have to RNG my way into some Sickos. That's assuming I don't get hasted or burnt out somehow. Disappointing. That was the moment to do this, and uh, turns out modern decks are pretty good and built with cheap interaction, and most decks aren't trying to resolve 5 and 6 drops. Yeah, go to 6. 
A coddle. Okay. What can I even do here? Teferi and Jace could each remove one of these creatures temporarily, but that's not even good. I think my plan is just send a gatewatch and hope that something very big comes out of it. Let's go. I need like Ugin plus. I missed. I literally missed. <laughs> I'm the Joker. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play for round two. No lands here. I got a mulligan. There is a land here, but it doesn't cast a lighted halfling. This is bad news, team. Mulligan. Uh, these lands also don't cast any of my spells, but they do cast my setup cards. So I will try them. But I need to draw like Delighted Halfling or Oath of Nyssa pretty quick here. That was a tough beat. There are 22 lands, 7 mana dorks, 4 Oath of Nyssas in the deck. Oh no. My thoughts. Gideon's out of here. Can we make a game out of this? Uh, maybe. I can literally half cast that Chandra. I have one of the red and one of the colorless. One has got two swamps over there. Land? Ramp spell? Oath of Nyssa? Oh no. It's a really shitty mulligan. Field of Ruin. I mean, please ruin that. Put a basic planes in my deck. I would like to own it. Alright, get a basic plane set up here. Now get lost is on at least. I can buy some time if stuff starts happening. Blaza. Let's go. We're getting closer. I'm a blue away from Jace and a red away from Chandra. Ball coffers, now big stupid stuff's gonna start happening. One ring, can't get lost that. Okay, it's a great turn to draw a fetch land. Temple Garden cast neither of these things in my hand. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, this deck does give a bunch of respect in deck building. There's a full playset of five color lands for your planeswalkers, a playset of delighted halflings, three sylvan caryatids, a playset of oath of nissa, and I just don't have any of those cards. And we're seeing what happens in the fail case. Inquisition of Kozlek. Yeah, sure. You can have one of these get lost. It's like you didn't even cast a spell. Sucker. Okay. Took my get lost. I can get car and lost anyway. You gotta wish for something because I'm about to kill this. They have six mana right now. Not right now, but you know, next turn. And I assume they they could come up with at least a swamp in their four cards they're gonna see, which makes it eight mana. Hitting needle. Okay, just name whichever one of these you're more scared of. More worried about Jace. I'm gonna get Karn lost here. Don't really have a way to push, but life is better without Karn in play. I'm sure of that. Hey, we're playing this game. Make a beast under pressure. And if Garrick sees in play, it can untap Plaza of Heroes, which can cast Chandra next turn. But like I said, my opponent's drawing four cards this turn, five cards next turn, six cards this turn after that, etc., etc. We're unlikely to be successful here. I had to come out way hotter than this. Field of Ruin takes out my Plaza. There's only planes and forest in the deck. Okay, in some trouble. How it'll be pretty hard to cast Chandra. I guess any red source I draw still does it. Until they march of wretched sorrow, my Garrick. Children's Edict, that does it too. And Fatal Push. Yeah, the One Ring does embarrass most Planeswalkers. Just generally speaking. So if I Oath of Nyssa into an untapped land, I could play Chandra this turn. Killed. D halves here. Until they show me that they're not going to die to their own ring, I'm going to keep playing this game. Just another ring or gain a bunch of life off of a march. There's lots of ways where they don't die to their own ring. This deck's very good at not dying to its own ring, but I have to play the game. Seven in the pool. Let's see who's yet taking Chandra. Now my hand is functionally empty. Karn with six mana still floating. Micah's and Lattice is banned, but they should be able to find something that wins the game here. Liquid Metal Coating. That'll do. All right, I'm out. All right, tough mulligan, tough matchup. What am I doing here? 
Veil of Summer seems reasonable. Ashiok shuts down all their fields. Kaya, what do you do? Not much. Exile's Pithing Needle, I guess, but do I even care about that? Probably not. I don't think I want Force of Vigor. Tamiyo does have some text here. Her passive is spells and abilities your opponent control can't make you discard or sacrifice. That stops Shouldred's Edict and their discard suite of their deck. And the regrowth is good against discard that's already resolved, so Tamiyo's actually good here. I think Karn Liberated is the worst of the bigos. Get Lost Halfling, Oath, Sylvan Carrioted. These are all non-negotiable. Narset actually seems great versus their One Ring, Lan. Teferi, who slows the sunset, just seems like not a very good Planeswalker, actually. And I think I am going to cut Liliana. Two Veils and an Ashiok. Let's do it. Oh my goodness. Is the mana in this deck bad? I might have to review this. Uh, Mulligan. I guess I have to keep this. I'm going to send Ukin to the bottom. And I'll play this Lush Portico. Draw the Shrine into the graveyard. Thoughtseize. This is why I kept this handful of lands instead of trying to model a 5 that has a scarier curve. Because they're going to disrupt my hit no matter what. And I'd at least like to hit my land drops and make my top decks better. Let's look at this real quick. Four fetch lands to tie all this together. There's one, two, three, four, eight, nine lands in the deck that don't cast Oath of Nyssa or Delighted Halfling. That might be a mess. We might not get two basic planes in the deck, at least. Okay. Draw for turn. Hey! There she is. Saving the day, bringing it all back. I'm going to take to Fairy, put Nickel Balls on the bottom. Just add another five drop to my suite of five drops in my hand. They have perfect info. Dothy Voidwalker. Tough beats. Now if they thought seize, they get my Planeswalker. Yikes. Temple Garden tapped. If they thought seize and start plussing to fairy, I don't think I can ever win. Suspended Profane Tutor. Come on, four drop Planeswalker. Give me something to do here. Sylvan Carrier did. Not the four drop Planeswalker I was looking for. That card would have been a great draw last turn. Cling to dust in the end step to draw a card. You got it. Profane Tutor down to one. Hoping they don't find the Thoughtseize until I cast a fairy. A one ring. Okay. I mean, that sucks, but also, okay. They played Urborg too, which means that I don't need to crack my Windswept Teeth. Oh, they're attacking with Voidwalker. What does that mean? I can kill it with Gideon. But then Teferi stuck in my hand. Yeah, I think I'm just going to cast a fairy here. Their Profane Tutor can shuffle away their One Ring if I tuck that, but then I just die to the creature attack. Here's Teferi. I guess I plus this and just try to make anything happen. I don't expect this to survive, given that Profane Tutor is about to resolve. Yeah, I just don't think I can beat the One Ring, even with 22 Planeswalkers. One One Ring is better than 22 Planeswalkers. And when the Edict this Teferi, it ends up in the Void. I'm not going to scoop because I could still top deck Oath of the Gatewatch and just send it. And maybe I would hit a Planeswalker this time. Activating the ring. Eight cards in hand. I could definitely beat that. Ali Voidwalker is attacking to fairy. Interesting. Plaza of Heroes costs three to activate and only targets creatures, so not useful in any capacity here. KGC. You know me. I think it got liquid metal coating and turn off to fairy during my turns. Or there might be something more horrifying. Sundering Titan. That's pretty bad too. Orcish Bow Masters also. Relentless. It's fairies at one. All right, I need an oath of the Gatewatch here. Get Lost is not the worst card I've ever seen in life. I can plus to fairy draw a card. Bowmaster pings it back down to one. So this is basically just like. Same thing, but I have a card in my hand. Okay, Plaza, and then Gideon. And Gideon can destroy Dothy Voidwalker. And then I can cast Sylvan Caryatid. And then end step, I'll untap two lands that can cast Get Lost. Don't feel great about this situation, but as far as bad turns go, that was a pretty good turn. I control a forest of plains, an island, and a swamp for this Sundering Titan. The ring is loading up. Karn's making another wish. 
The get loss is actually huge here. If they get too clever with Karn, like if they get coding and try to freeze my Planeswalker on my turn or something. Six, seven, eight. They can Titan here. They can't Titan and coding. They're settling for just Titan. <laughs> A reasonable decision. Okay, so I think here, and this has to resolve, and then I float green-white, and I let them sunder. I want to see what they're going to take here. Oh, they chose Windswept Heath as my swamp. I prefer that over Plaza of Heroes, for sure. Oh no, they figured it out. They heard me. Okay, they can knock me down to one land here, but they did leave two things behind, so I get to keep one. And they can clear Teferi, but I get to keep Gideon. I'm going to have four mana next turn. Look out my plaza. Both creatures should attack Teferi here, and they did. I'm not going to block because Teferi dies anyway, and no reason to risk some like pump spell or something on my carry to. They see cling to dust off their map, put it in the graveyard where it belongs. Okay, big four mana banger planeswalker is what I need here. That might qualify. Okay, I'm going to destroy Orcish Bowmaster, and then I'm going to cast Jace. Wait, what's happening? I didn't say it costs one more than it does. It doesn't. Okay, weird. I think I want to bounce Orc Army. I don't think brainstorming into this is going to do anything. I honestly don't think anything's going to do anything, but I am going to at least get the board clear. They can just attack me with their One Ring this turn, attack Jace with the One Ring. Or cast some six drop from their hand. Shieldred, yikes. They're in the end game now, Stark. Okay, I'm good. Uh, they're going to start coding my lands, and I can't draw cards anyway. We made a fight out of that. Okay, let's actually look at this mana base, because I am now suspicious. There's nine lands in this deck that don't cast Halfling or Nyssa on at all, and then Lush Portico doesn't cast it on turn one. So 10 of our 22 lands don't actually cast our essential mana engine dorks i think that's actually a huge mistake that i missed when i was reviewing the the deck i think we need to kind of normalize this like i get the intention of wanting to be able to cast the planeswalkers in your deck if you don't have these dorks but you just can't even keep hands if you don't play the dorks or the fixers calling out the nissa dorks not exactly accurate but the the fixers yeah, I don't think you get two basic planes. Blood Moon be damned. It's fine. Oath of Nyssa beats Blood Moon anyway. Yeah, probably like Godless Shrine, one of the basic planes. The Sacred Foundry could just be three more fetch lands. And we're already doing better. Okay, that's going to be something we have to navigate the rest of the league. Can't change it now, but we've already identified a big way to improve this deck. On to the next round. The Bosch and Roll channel is proudly partnered with the Resleevables. Hmm. Good. All right, here we go, gang. In this YouTube series, hosts Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan take us on a set-by-set -set journey through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Magic's history. Each episode is a focused deep dive into the facts about a set's design and release. The magic lore expressed through the cards in that set Tournament Edition gameplay videos featuring products and Pro Tour decks of the era. An award show that shouts out the best and weirdest cards of the set. And a final grade for the set's overall success. Whether you want a history lesson or a nostalgia hit, The Resleevables has it at youtube.com slash the Resleevables. On the play in round three, I am going to keep this hand based on identifying the and lands in our deck that don't cast our spells i think it is important and i'm gonna play as such to just keep hands that have three or four mana in them oh good it's tron another deck that goes way over the top of everything lush portico get some selection carry a tid let's go that is about as good as that gets All right, here goes carry a tid i could have prismatic ending the sphere and i probably would have if i hadn't found a carry a tid Sphere, Stirrings, Power Plant, that is another one. Hard to tell with these goofy arts. Okay, I think I actually do want to end the map. Though sticking Jace versus Tron is 
not embarrassing. Like, this is a clear line to Tron. They still have six cards in their hand, though. God, four drops are so much more than three drops. I wish I had just drawn a like, Teferi Time Raveler and Narset that turn instead. So I wouldn't have to make this difficult decision. Wait, what can they cast next turn? Something that costs two? All right, I'm casting Jace. Trying to screw a Tron player out of mana when they have six cards in the hand seems like just such an uphill battle that it doesn't even seem worth doing. Okay, Liliana actually seems reasonable somehow. Liliana can vamp for it to play the Gatewatch and try to go over the top. Okay, here comes Tron. They have two mana left. Hers is mine. And a pass. Okay, the top of my deck right now is something not helpful. I'm going to fetch before I Jace. I'm going to get Overgrown Tomb and Brainstorm. Okay, land. Uh, we're way past Halfling. I think we're way past Prismatic Ending also, but Ending can knock out an Oblivion Stone. I think Elspeth Sun Champion, while it is awesome top end. Yeah, maybe Gideon Jura is worse. All right, Gideon Jura is out of here. All right, I'm going to just try to deploy the gate, watch next turn. That's the plan. Vampiric Tutor. Grab a deploy. Let's go. I'm going to at least try to do the thing. Sucks that we're playing against a deck with Oblivion Stone in it. Because otherwise, I would actually feel like this start is really hard to beat for modern decks. The One Ring, there's that card again. That means I can't plus Liliana unless I want to discard a card. I might have to take a turn off just to Prismatic Ending the One Ring. I do have enough colors to do that. Garn the Great Creator, <laughs> there's this. I'm going to get so sundered here. Hitting Needle. That's relevant next turn. Okay, so deploy the Gatewatch doesn't shuffle or anything. It's not Mind's Desire, which means I can tutor whatever my best Planeswalker is to the top here. Let's find out what that is. Karn Lib can exile the One Ring or their Karn Great Creator. Nickel Bolas, destroy target non-creature permanent. Wow, that can just take them off Tron. Ugin can deal three to Karn. I think I want Nickel Bolas, and then hope that there's something else in there as well. Okay, this is kind of fun. Oh, I can brainstorm with Jace and set up and make sure there is something else there too. Fascinating. Okay, we're doing this. Fetch first, get basic forest, brainstorm. Oh wait, this doesn't matter. I needed to Liliana first because she's about to shuffle it away. Okay, uh, there's the Nick. Um, okay. Yeah, I needed to Liliana first, then Brainstorm, and I would have seen the Nickel Balls. It's fine. It's fine. We'll figure it out. Um, I have to put back Bolas and then wish for it. That's embarrassing. I guess I don't have to wish for it now that it's just here. I could get Nickel Bolas and Tamio back, and then Tamio can get back to play the Gatewatch for next turn. And then I just leave Liliana on two, or three, whatever she's at. Okay. Nickel Bolas, Tamio. I'm going to deploy the Gatewatch. There might still be something better than Tamio in there, but we're definitely getting Nicol Bolas. So we're on Grim Nemesis. Deals X damage target creature, Blip and so I can gain X life. Are you kidding? I can take them off Tron and kill Karn here. You come in on six? Good deal. All right, Nicol Bolas, Soren. Okay. Give me those. Destroy target non creature permanent. How about Urza's Tower? X damage target creature or Planeswalker. Deal three to Karn. Oh, yeah. We're doing stuff. Um, I could plus on myself. I think I am going to do that. I think just having more loyalty on Lilian is useful and Delighted Halfling is not useful. That was a fun turn, even if we lose. Still having a good time here. Now they have to come up with Tower before they can even really do anything. Drawing two cards. I have a uh, Prismatic Ending for the Pithing Needle. Ooh, Forest is not in Ursa's Tower. Sylvan Scrying. They had to use the force to get the tower, but I can kill Power Plant in the interim and keep them off Tron for another turn. Needle's fine. Has to name Nickel Bolas. Oh, yeah. They got eight cards in hand. So they'll have to clean up one of them. Oh, I can just chain oaths together here. Just wish for one, brainstorm it into my hand with Jace. All right, I'm going to start by Prismatic Ending. Do I need to start with that? No, I'm going to start with Liliana. Oh, Soren can also dome my opponent for a bunch. 
Okay. Um, can I just win, I guess, is a question that I should be asking myself. All right, search a library for a card, put it on top. It's going to be to play the Gatewatch. Then I'm going to plus Soren. My opponent loses six life, and I get out of the play. And then I can brainstorm with Jace to try to set this up, at least guarantee that Elspeth is in there. Draw three cards, put two back. Behiri and Teferi. Okay. Uh, Behiri can exile a tapped artifact, which covers the one ring. Teferi can just reload me. I think Teferi is better than Elspeth. Elspeth gets the game over really quick, though, but I can ultimately lay on an X turn or Nicol Bolas. I'm going to get names wrong like crazy. I'm just excited and saying words. Okay. Teferi and Nahiri back into the stack. I should Prismatic Ending Pithing Needle and kill the Power Plant before I do anything else here just to play around Warping Whale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Liliana, I see you now. Yeah, Liliana with a draw engine of any kind does just deploy the Gatewatch multiple times in a row. I'm, I'm getting it. The pieces are coming together. I don't think Ugin's very good. Ashiok's insane. Collector Oof, absolutely necessary. Force of Vigor, maybe. If I have five cuts. They're a one ring deck, so I like Narset. It's a very time raveler, doesn't really matter. Gris can kill all Karns. It Teferi's out. I think Gideon Jura comes out. I gotta read this Teferi again. This is just anticipate, basically. I tap some and untap some stuff, and I gain two life. Yeah, I'm not really interested in this card. I have to be careful about the Planeswalker ins and outs because whiffing on to play the Gatewatch is really bad, as we saw earlier. Maybe I don't need two Force of Vigors. I'm just going to go for and keep my Planeswalker count up. Okay, let's do it. I am reactivated, engaged, invested in this match now. Like I said, I have to basically keep any hand that could cast a spell because we've seen how the mulligans can spiral out. This can get my Lush Portico. So it will. I'll take any selection. Chromatic Sphere. Ancient Stirrings. Tower. Towers in play. And another Sphere. Get my Portico. Don't need another Windswept Teeth. Prismatic Ending. All right, here we go again. Uh, I think I am going to take out the Sphere. Because that represents Stirrings or Sylvan Library. Or Sylvan Scrying when otherwise the green cards don't work. If they needle me later, or if they just have Tron anyway, that's going to stink. But if they, you know, play a Chromatic Star and miss their land drop, that feels like someone who has Sylvan Scrying in their hand. Okay, Oath of Nyssa, let's get it. Find the goods. Collector Roof. Can I, I can't take creatures, right? Creature, Lander, Planeswalker. Yeah, Collector Roof was a reasonable thing to shout there. Take Sylvan Karyatid. Deploy an Elspeth on the bottom. Plaza of Heroes, Sylvan Karyatid. Okay, I have Teferi available next turn. They might assemble Tron right now, but I'm at least doing stuff. Green in the pool, draw a card. And they did have Scrying. So that Prismatic Ending actually was just Time Walk. A huge deal. Can I leverage this in any meaningful way? I'm going to shove Teferi, and then I can hold up Get Lost on their turn. Tamiyo, she beats all his dust because they can't make me sacrifice stuff. I don't know if that's a card that Tron is playing right now, but it is a card that's in the deck sometimes. They had a backup mine straight to nine mana here. One ring. Pain in my tuckus. The fairy can tuck it though. Tuck yourself, one ring. Five in the pool. KGC. I can get that lost. I might have to get lost to Pithing Needle here though. That sucks. Or I could get lost the Karn, but between One Ring and Karn, they have engines either way. Haywire might. Fascinating. Do I care about that? I don't think so. And it is something that they can map onto, but it's also something that I can exile with the Wandering Emperor. Right, I'm going to get Karn lost. Narset would be a great find here. Narset? Collector Roof. I am not unhappy with that at all. Plus to fairy, halfling. I can play oof, lock up their business, and I can still play halfling and untap two lands and have wandering emperor available. Okay, I mean I'm doing stuff. It's freaking Tron. 
there's lots of ways that this could go wrong, but I am doing stuff. They're taking one of turn from a permanent that has no abilities. No abilities other than dealing one to them each turn. Cityscape leveler. Disappointing. I wish Plaza of Heroes could target a legendary permanent and save the Teferi here. Tough beats. This also means that my uh, power stones don't work. Fine. Bye, Teferi. Love you. Okay. Should I put Wandering Emperor in, or should I save it for Exile Duty on the Cityscape Leveler? Probably has to just Exile the Leveler. Leveler is going to kill Collector Roof on attack, though. Is there any way to actually Blitz damage through here? Like, Jace could bounce Cityscape Leveler, but then they just replay it. I could just try to Overwhelm. All right, I'm going to play Wandering Emperor. And this is a Destroy. Make a Samurai. Come on, relevant card. That's not it. Make another samurai. Jace bounce the leveler attack for a bunch. That line does exist. Okay, I think I'm in for that. And I have exactly five mana to do everything here. Blue, 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 colorless. Not a great answer, but it is going to happen. All the shrine tapped. Wandering Emperor make a 2-2. Two -two. And attack my opponent for seven, or this doesn't have haste, for five. And then Tamio, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was a weird block. They blocked the one, two instead of one of the two, twos. These things don't have trample. It's not a trade. Strange. I wonder if they thought this was a one, one. I don't know. Okay. I am going to have eight mana next turn. Tamio can get back, get lost. And zap the leveler. Could I have done that that turn? Did I just blow it with this Jace? I think I did. I, I'm pretty sure I had six metal last turn. Oops. Trying to be way too clever here. Rexian Metamorph. No, not another one. I just figured out how to beat the first one. Okay, that sucks. Chromatic Star. If I draw another Get Lost. I don't deserve it, but it would be there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One short of Ashiaking them which actually does matter because these things have unearth. This one doesn't. So I guess I get lost the metamorph. I'm not attacking this turn. Green, blue, colorless, colorless, doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm bummed out I missed this last turn because then metamorph wouldn't have anything to copy. Blew it. Forgot how good regrowth is in general. I'm going to put a plus one counter on this samurai. I could get lost on their turn, or I could just do it now. Does this matter at all? Just do it now. Kill the one without on Earth. Now I have two Planeswalkers to kill. Blockers that I'm fine blocking with. They're at 13 life, with their one ring still poking. They got two cards left in hand. That's a really good one. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I might have blown it on that turn where I forgot I could regrow an actual removal spell. Blocking Ballista... Yeah, if they attack with Cityscape Leveler, kill Collector Oof, this thing can then machine gun everything else. They have to do that, though. And this Ballistic can come in on five counters, and then Map Token might add another one. They have to kill Oof, though, and they did. Okay. And what is this attacking? Me. Okay, I'll go to nine, rather than lose any creatures here. The Ballista has to immediately deal some damage to Wandering Emperor, or else Leveler's gone. Or you could do that, and everything's gone. That is the card I was most worried about in their entire deck. And now they're just doing stuff. One Rings Open, Chromatic Star, Found Ancient Stirrings, revealing another O-Stone. O-Stone is Destroy, right? Yep. Expedition Map, Explored onto the Leveler. Mapping again, Forest in Hand. And they're just busting O-Stone right now. No questions asked. I don't have any legendary creatures or mana to save anything. Okay, that hurts. I guess I have to... Oh, I just clicked away that O-Stone in exile. Didn't occur to me that might be another one, which it is. Ashiok, I'm going to exile the Cityscape Leveler, and I'll just play this Temple Garden. I'm very dead to this Walking Ballista in their hand. Okay, Collector Roof is amazing. Cityscape Leveler is really good. Remember, Tamioth is a regrowth. And I got game three coming. Okay, more protection. And reset the, the damage. That was my main win con. 
I have six mana, though. You know what that means. I get to play the Gage Watch. Star, stirrings. They're just doing stuff. All kinds of stuff. Another ring. Boogan. Just doming me. Hell yeah. I'm dead to burn. Next turn. Deploy, deploy, deploy. All right, we're dead. That was fun. Uh, there was a mistake made, which may or may not have affected the outcome of the game, but definitely worth being aware of. Chandra can pile up emblems on them if we get into a grindy spot like that again. 3 each non-elemental doesn't matter. Rest in peace stops worm coil, stops uh, unearth, but I'm not doing that. That doesn't matter. It stops chromatic star from drawing a card. None of that's good enough. I think this is the best spread I'm going to get here. And now I'm on the play with a full no lander. Mulligan that. Okay, I have to keep these. And I'm going to bottom Elspeth's Sun's Champion and lead on Halfling. Tron's not great at killing a one drop on turn one. They might have some dismembers in the sideboard or something, but generally, I expect this to still be around on my turn. Expedition map. A Halfling can cast Oath of Nyssa. Nahiri the Harbinger versus Plaza of Heroes. I think I like Nahiri. I have no creatures to grab onto my deck, though. There's not even like one Emrakul in here. I mean, that doesn't make sense for one Nahiri in the deck, but yeah, I'll take her, play my land and my halfling. I can get Lush Portico this turn, and we'll see what happens. Guaranteed Tron. Opponent have been very good at keeping seven in their Tron deck. Normally you need Tron to Maldo like five, because they shouldn't be really be keeping hands that don't make Tron, and if their opening hand just does, you're in trouble. A lot like Vintage Dredge in that regard. I'm going to bring this Oath of Nyssa. That would just be trying to cantrip for a land, which I found anyway. Got him. Okay, I can save Nahiri for later. I could Tamio and just put Windswept Teeth back in my hand. I could Tamio and plus naming deploy the Gate Watch. That's actually interesting. Do I need to attack for one or save two life? I want to attack for one. Okay. I'm going to Tamio and plus naming deploy the Gate Watch. Deploy the Gate Watch. Let's go. We got one and put Halfling carry to Garruk into the graveyard. That means if they don't wrath me this turn, Nihiri can minus get back Windswept Teeth, and that's six if I don't draw a land. I'm, of course, just iced to a Oblivion Stone, which is always going to be true. AGC, okay. Minus. Engineered Explosives, okay. Uh, this is one mana short of wiping out all my stuff this turn, mercifully. Bad news for next turn, though. Explosives, X equals 1. 1 floating. That was almost really good. They think Needle. Oh, no! If they name Tamio here, I actually have to hit the land drop, naturally. Oh, no! All right, deck, come on. Deliver the goods. 18 outs here. Come on, deck. Don't be a jerk. Come on, deck. Don't be a jerk. The deck? Only kind of a jerk. As far as cards I could draw that are not a land go, I'm pretty happy with that one. Collector Oof, attack Karn for two is the line. Attack Karn for two. This Force of Vigor, I don't have a green card to pitch. All my green cards are busy being in play. And they have more Tron, nine in the pool. They're just going to Ugin and wipe me anyway. Yep. Uh, I hate Tron so much. Yeah, just exile everything. And now we were so close. They set up this engineered explosives line that didn't even matter. Just had the mana wrong and then had Pithing Needle anyway. Now they could attack me with the Pithing Needle, the biggest middle finger of all. all right, how do I come back from this? There's a land. Hard to call that right on time, but I am happy to see it. This can exile the Pithing Needle because that's now a tapped ar artifact in play. And I can get back. Oath of Nyssa or land? What would I rather have? Probably the land. Tough beats. We are not going to come out from under this Ugin. It could pick off each of these Planeswalkers one in a row, one at a time. Arn still has one big wish left in him, and they have nine mana at least. Killing Nahiri. Now they're making wishes. Crack their star. Found ancient stirrings. Firm coil engine. Yeah, that's a, a big old threat you could play. There it is. Sphere. 
Stirrings. Urza Saga, suddenly revealed in Game 3. Okay, Oath of Nyssa, pretty good, actually. Found a bunch of lands. Not upset with those. Play Windswept Teeth. I might as well plus Tamiyo naming something. What do I want to do here? There are three Delighted Halflings in my deck. I can name a card I actually want, but they're all one-ofs. Or I could name just a high-density green card, which would be Delighted Halfling, to try to enable Force of Vigor, but I could just cast Force of Vigor. I think they forgot the plus card last turn. I'll take that. Yeah, I would name probably Get Lost or Plaza of Heroes if I was going to name Tamiyo here. I have more plazas. I'm going to name Plaza of Heroes. It's like the only four I've left in the deck. Oh, not my card. Guess I'm not naming that. I'll name Get Lost. Uh, Teferi and Sorin and Narset all just hit the graveyard. I'm going to get this basic forest and probably Force of Vigor now. Kill Saga and Worm Coil. I would have waited for combat or for Karn to do something if they didn't have Saga, which would immediately represent a bunch more threats. Am I dead to Walking Ballista here? They just spewed off. Oh yes, I know Titan works too. All right, yep. GG. Yeah, that sequence where they were able to Pithing Needle and turn off my regrow a land drop, that was the perfect needle thread to buy them into Ugin, which probably would have just beat me anyway, honestly. But we took a game off them. We're on the board. Let's go. The NYSE Open is a prestigious, long-running vintage tournament based out of New York City. It's returning again this summer, June 22nd, 2024, in Plainview, New York. This 15 proxy event has a $500 entry. That's a lot of money, but what are we playing for? First place gets a Black Lotus. Second through eighth place get Time Twister, Time Walk, and all five Moxin. At 115 players, a playset of Bizarre Baghdad is added to the prize pool. At 135, four Mistress Workshops. At 155, four Foil Gaia's Cradle. This prize pool is better than Eternal Weekend. If you think it's worth playing for, sign up for the event on Melee.gg or use the link in the video description, and I will definitely see you there. On the plan round four, punished by the basic planes again. I would keep this if it was a forest. Got a mulligan. That hurts. Okay, this one's good. Good to go. I'm going to put Karn liberated to the bottom. This is a turn two grist if my halfling survives. Goodbye, Karn. Fetch for, I think I get Temple Garden here. If their burn or zoo or some hyper aggro deck is what it is, but just making sure the mana works in this deck, even if my halfling dies, is pretty important. Arid Mesa confirmed. What are we doing with this? My Grist is ready to stuff Ragavan all day. Are we actually playing against Burn? That was a joke. This isn't supposed to be a real thing. Oh, Prismatic Ending. Sure. I need a land now. Yikes. Okay. Next land cast Grist, but this hurts. What do I think this is? Creativity, maybe? What deck has Prismatic Ending and Sacred Foundry in it? Most Sacred Foundry decks are going too fast for that. I am fairly confident that this is creativity at this point. I'm going to kill Ren in 6. I can't actually Prismatic Ending it. Okay, Halfling. It's like a land, but worse. I did just give them a bunch of targets for creativity, but I think that is still better than Ren in 6 being in play. If they fetch Steam Vents and play Teferi here, that's very good and basically confirms my suspicions. Steam Vents. White in the pool. Blue in the pool. A colorless in the pool. Oh my god. Look at that. Who could have predicted this? Okay. Uh, I will cast Grist here. Three turns behind schedule. I just milled Nickel Ballas. Opponent now knows I'm on some shit. They might just hit me with an Archon this turn and it doesn't matter. So I can beat one Archon. If they make one Archon this turn, which is what they have the mana to do, I can play Delighted Half... I can discard Ending, Sack Insect, play Halfling, chuck that at the Archon with Grist. Then we're back to something resembling stability. They at least have to send it again with their 7-card hand. How would they ever figure that out? Run in 6 can kill my bug, but not if they need a land drop. Did kill the bug. They don't need a land drop. They can fetch for a dwarf token out of dwarven mine here and put two maps on it. 
Didn't do that. Okay. Things are starting to happen. Am I more worried about Teferi or Renin 6? Probably Renin 6. White, green, exile Ren. I can pay for Spell Pierce. They're doing it anyway. The Spell Pierce does keep my Halfling out of play. They might even have two Spell Pierces, which would be consistent with this play pattern. Okay, that happened. Delighted Halfling is still in my hand. Milled Jace the Mind Sculptor. If they have creativity and a land, they can get two Archons right now, which would kill Insect and Grist and make me Hellbent. I will concede to that, just straight up. There's the Dwarf, Blood Crypt. Shocked it in, five mana, the finger's on the button. All right, I will at least look at the cards they reveal, get the information about their deck that I'm able to get, and now I will concede. So we're seeing a thing, and we had a conversation about this on the Eternal Glory podcast a couple episodes ago uh, about deck building, where you can't really just focus on what your deck does because your opponent exists too, and they're also doing powerful things. And my opponent that game had Prismatic Ending, Spell Pierce, Teferi, Time Raveler, and Ren and Six, all of which interacted with my permanence, and then they still just killed me on turn five. Meanwhile, I'm trying to basically goldfish out a six drop, that then may or may not actually win the game. Uh, which, obviously, like we know, this deck was never going to break the metagame. That's not what we're doing here. But we're just, you know, talking about some stuff. And if you are going to have a deck that needs a bunch of stuff to go right, you need to make sure your mana's good to at least give you a chance to give you that puncher's chance. Because if your deck is already asking a lot to be functional... And then on top of asking a lot to be functional, it also just isn't functional on its own merits. That is way too much gone. All right, Veil of Summer Containment Priest are correct. Ashiok, I like. They do a lot of fetching in this deck. Ashiok doesn't stop the combo, but could stop the setup. Wrath of God and Rest in Peace have some application in the matchup, but I don't really want to have to beat a board with Archon on it. I own Teferi's. I think I still want that because this is a Spell Pierce deck. I don't see Nahiri being useful in the matchup. Also, the fact that the sideboard plan is basically universally cut the worst Planeswalkers, which makes deploying the Gatewatch harder because you have just fewer Planeswalkers. Started at 19, I'm down to 15, and I still am looking for two cuts. It'll be up one because of Ashiok, but this is, this is rough. I can't really afford to cut the spells. Maybe I will cut the spells. What happens if I just cut these prismatic endings? Leave in the get lost because they can kill Archons and try to send it. I'm just going to mix around here because clearly the plan of trying to play normal magic with this abnormal deck is not working. All right, I'll keep this. Oath of Nisha, we snap off. Take the Oath. Godless Shrine, Chandra. I'll take Chandra. I am trying to get to six mana here, but I'd rather take this spell when it's in front of me. This is that 3-drop Planeswalker, 4-drop Planeswalker curve I mentioned in the deck tech that has not come up once yet. All right, big Sorens here. Temple Garden tapped and pass. 3, 4, five. Oh, so this is a 6-drop. I was about to say 3, 4, 5, 6, the perfect curve, but that's not even true. Sword broke the curve. And this is the other thing I mentioned being likely to be annoying in the deck tech, where sometimes you're just going to draw your 6, 7, and 8-drop Planeswalkers, and then what? Run in six. Yeah, that who's the planeswalker deck now? The good news is Ashiok is good against Run in Six. I'm gonna fetch a planes and cast Ashiok. Because that's the thing I can do. White, green, white. The inside out Ashiok. And I'm gonna zap them once to get their graveyard empty. And they can't fetch now. Let's hope they needed that fetch land that they just picked up with Ren to continue playing. They could just start minusing Ren, taking Ashiok down. Spell Pierce is as live as it could ever be in any game of Magic right now. If they Prismatic Ending my Oath of Nyssa, I am just in the garbage. Never casting these cards in my hand. Or at least the Chandra. Chandra's done. I can't actually cast the other ones with one more land. The colors are there. Somehow. Alright, we're putting one on Ashiok. This is a Lightning Bolt deck. They could just finish them off and just fetch anyway. <laughs> Disappointing. Alright. Man, Modern decks are good. Full of cheap interaction that handles common problems. 
Okay, they can combo for one next turn. I'm just going to hope that they don't. Okay, here's Chandra. I'm going to cast her for a green and white. Because it's funny. Yeah, if they go Spell Pierce, Untap, Fetch Land, Creativity for one, I probably just can't beat that. But I don't think I'm winning a game where I don't do those things either. I'm going to get Reprieved here because they just shocked in a white source instead of blue. It's not Spell Pierce. But I mean, if they have the thing, they're going to combo next turn. Chandra is also a ramp spell, which makes to play the Gatewatch happen a turn sooner, which is why I prioritize that too. And we know they have the fetch land because Ren is there and Ashiok's gone. White mana in the pool. Prismatic ending. Yeah, clever. That means they're not comboing this turn, though. That's big for me. And that gives me a turn to set up a containment priest. If they have Teferi, priest isn't going to be any good anyway. We'll see what happens here. Okay, commercial district. That doesn't cast a fairy this turn. Bind and Archon. They don't have black up to persist that. And picked up wooded foothills with Ren. Okay, what can we do here? Fetch for a red source or possibly a lush portico while holding up Kadema Priest. That is land number six for deploy. If they get greedy this turn, I can. Like, if Priest actually gets a blowout this turn. And then I untap and deploy. This is a game we can win. So I don't even know if deploy is better than jamming Soren. If I get a chance to get, spend six mana next turn. Okay, they're just passing. I think I should fetch the stomping ground and try to get a chance at Chandra. Because if I can Chandra plus containment priest, that's actually a lot. Godless Shrine doesn't do it. I don't think I'm trying to just send into their hand of seven cards. I need them to make a mistake. I need them to underestimate my deck or not think about what cyber cards I could have. Because if they just tick Ren up to ultimate and then have Lightning Bolt and Reprieve ready to hit all my spells, that stinks. I could just end step the priest so it's there and then start tapping out for other things. Then they know it's there and they're definitely not going to jam into it. But it doesn't seem like they're going to do that anyway. And this is a good lesson about playing these combo control decks. Don't forget about the control half of the combo deck, even if your opponent seems to be on some dopey non-blue deck where you could shove. Doesn't necessarily mean you should. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is in. Containment Priest doesn't stop tokens from entering the battlefield, so there's no reason to fight here. Okay, I think I'm going to play the Priest and at least start doing something here. Maybe they fight over this, maybe they don't. Maybe they just have a lightning bolt and they don't care about this at all. Yep, no love there. Okay, uh, Spell Pierce gets me no matter what, so I'm just going to deploy the Gatewatch. And I have a backup deploy, ready to de redeploy. Oh wow, that resolved, and they said that's fine, and they're going to be correct, because I, I hit one Wandering Emperor. Ew. What a garbage pile. The pile of seven cards, not the deck. The deck's not exactly holding up either, but uh, I'm not just going to call a deck a garbage pile aggressively that I was sent. And I appreciate the support. Yeah, that's another whole aspect of this. Like, if we're playing a deck that... If there was some card that was just like six mana, you win. And if you can resolve this six mana sorcery, you win. That's one thing. Or, you know, effectively win or whatever. Like, even if it's something like Tooth and Nail. Like, that's a card that... Uh, a big, expensive, stupid sorcery that has dominated things in the past. Tournaments in the past formats in the past but that's just like not what to play the gatewatch says it might actually do nothing we've seen it the game that it won we were vampiric tutoring and brainstorming to set it up and the other two times we've cast it it hit zero and one planeswalker it discarded two wooded foothills to fable ren can go up to seven this turn which means it can emblem next turn and then we're just stuck behind reprieve the rest of the game i'm not gonna block because the samurai is currently a Thing I could sacrifice and I wouldn't really miss if they have some edict effect. Like if they just cast an Archon here, I would much rather sacrifice the Samurai. They still have a land drop. They got seven mana represented. Yep, they shocked in mana number eight. Okay, at least I, I feel like I played that turn well, even if I am getting smooshed. Discard Chandra. I have another deploy ready to go. They forgot to activate Ren, I think. Didn't start the turn on six? Okay. 
Moment of truth. Oh, the lib. This can exile Archon and go to three in the process. And then Goblin plus one and six can eat it. I'm kind of tempted to just deploy the Gatewatch and try to high roll here because, like, as much as I would have liked to just hit Karn out of the deploy, that's not on the table. And I guess Jace and Teferi aren't even good. Yeah, I guess I'll cast Karn. Exile target permanent. Get that Archon out of here. And do I attack Ren for two? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to block. How many Archons are in your hand? Do you have another one? Fable exiled, thanks to Containment Priest. Got that under control. Shaman plus Ren and Six finish off Karn. And then the mana's back up. Oh, they're attacking me. Interesting. And Lightning Bolt also finishes off Karn. Can they nine ball me somehow? I basically just have to hope that their hand is just all creativities and persists that don't work for Priest. Dwarven Mind, this works. That's a token. And they do have Lightning Bolt. Five cards left in hand. It probably means they're not holding a bunch of creativities because they could have just bolted Priest and then fired the creativity. Another Archon. All right. Deploy the Gatewatch. This is your moment to shine. There is no other anything happening here. We win or lose on the back of this monster right now. Both of Nyssa. That doesn't actually... Wait. Yeah, you put the rest in the bottom in any order. That doesn't actually help. Okay. I'm just going to deploy. Here we go. Moment of truth. Grist and Garrick. Garrick plus Grist. Okay. Uh, that's not the nickel bolus I was hoping for. I can kill the Archon with this. I can also Oath and see what happens. I can untap two lands with Garrick, if that matters. Narset in my hand. All right, make a 3-3 beast. I may sack a creature. Sack this one. Kill Archon. Uh, one, two, three, four. I'm at two on board. We're definitely losing, but I at least got to do the thing. I hit two Bladeswalkers off of a random Oath of the Gatewatch cabinet. And they're attacking me. If they have a Lightning Bolt, I lose. They know my hand is Narset. Okay, cool. Yep, another just a demonstration of why you generally don't see fun brews in high-power formats. Well, you can brew... I like to think that I have some fun brews on this channel that are competitive, but you have to brew within the rules of engagement and resolving a six mana sorcery that may or may not do anything when we're playing in a format where a four mana sorcery can put Archon of Cruelty into play and curve relevant like Lightning Bolt, Red and Six to Fairy up into that play. We are deeply outclassed by the decks in this format. We got one round to go. Let's fend off a reverse trophy. Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic. On the play in the final round, reverse trophy on the line. I'm going to keep this hand. It has perfect mana. It just needs something to do with that mana. I think Gideon of tr the Trials, simply based on it being a 3-drop rather than a 4-drop, is my take here. Moment of truth. Are we just going to get... Donkeyed by Amulet, or is it Tron again? Coffers, who's going over the top? We have Tanglewood Bridge, Tangle Pool Bridge. This is some sort of Simic Affinity deck. I don't actually know what this is. Is this a Synthesizer deck? Has that made it to Modern? I haven't really played much Modern since OTG came out, so maybe this is a thing. Basic Planes revealed. Temple Garden tapped and passed the turn. I can really afford to stop drawing lands at this point. The cool thing about this hand, at least in theory, is that Gideon can buy time for me to draw more stuff. Oh, is this just uh, Hardened Scales? Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. Affinity confirmed. All right. Cranial Plating is going to be tough to whack a mole with this Gideon. Uh, if I had drawn Spell Spell and just been able to cast Planeswalkers here, 
maybe this would have worked, but as it stands, this is the pit. I'm going to stop all damage Frogmite would deal. I wish I could stop all damage Cranial Blading would deal. I mean, technically, what's really responsible for the damage that being dealt here? I need a Flavor Judge to rule. But if they equip Cranial Plating, they're giving up on Saga Constructs. Because they don't have Acceleration. Yeah, okay. They're just putting one on Gids. Alright, deck. This is an opportunity to draw a relevant card and do something. A 5-drop, hell yeah. Okay. Um, I can make an emblem with as long as I control a Gideon, I can't lose the game. Which means they'll have to put at least 3 damage on Gideon next turn to kill me, but that doesn't actually absorb any damage. It's not like you don't take damage if you control a Gideon. Yeah, I think plussing is still correct here. A plus on the Frogo. And I guess I Windswept Teeth because the Lush Portico could dig. Yeah, this hand was on spec, and uh, I've drawn 3 cards this game, and it was land, land, 5 drop. If one of those two lands was a 4-drop and we were actually applying pressure this turn, maybe this would have been fine. But we're still just getting smooshed by Urza Saga. Remember that card? Also legal in the format, by the way. I'm going to fetch Portico before they can get Pithing Needle, which I don't think they're going to do anyway, but I'm still going to play around it. Prismatic Hending. That's not the worst card I could draw. I'll put it on top. Would have liked it last turn. Lava Spur Boots. Wow. We are so dead. That's 9 Hasty Ward. They must not have a land, or else they would have made another construct that just killed me. Thoughtcast into Springleaf Drum, Frogmite. They probably shouldn't have equipped that Lava Spur Boots when they did, because that's a mana that they used for a creature that could attack anyway, and they do have stuff like Frogmite that's free. I'm still very dead, but I do think that was an inefficient use of mana. Moral victory. And actual defeat. Kaya's good. Force of Vigor, Collector Oof, all good. Wrath of God seems good enough. I'll take it. Chandra Awakened Inferno, the minus three. Kid kill a bunch of stuff. And Karn too slow. Ugin too slow. Liliana too slow. Nahiri's actually good. Get Lost feels terrible, but also seems like the only way I could ever play the game. Narset doesn't seem like she matters. Chandra's removal. Teferi remains the worst Planeswalker in the deck. And once again, I'm cutting a bunch of Planeswalkers, making Deploy the Gatewatch worse. I still have three more cuts to go. I could just cut three Karyatids. Obviously, fixing your mana and speeding things up for this, this deck matter, but I think overpowering them matters too. And if I'm boarding in Wrath of Gods, three Wrath of Gods basically with Chandra, is this an elemental? Nope, plant. All right, yeah, that definitely dies to fire. Okay, I'll try this. Hope it works out. Snapkeep. Great hand. Here we go. This is about as good as it gets. Basic Forest, Oath of Nyssa, Halfling Chandra, Land. Chandra is removal. I would have to trust my deck to come up with a land in the interim. Yeah, I think the, the Chandra strat is the one. And I do actually have normal removal spells in this hand. Gatewatch, okay. I'm going to pass. My plan is to fetch Lush Portico and try to find land number four to make sure things happen. Saga. Oh, I could have killed that with its trigger on the stack. That was loosey-goosey. I think I am still going to kill this Saga in the end step. I'm going to get planes. This is a very good enchantment to not be in play anymore. Come on, deck. Yeah, okay. Hallowed Fountain tapped. Prismatic Ending Spring Leaf Drum. I'm going for the full denial. The Pox game. The Pox game plan that this deck apparently has and is just revealed to me now at the end of round five. Another Saga? No. Another drum. I've done nothing. No, I time walked them and I'm trying to get four drops into play. Plaza. Chandra. Chandra is a ramp spell, which is why I'm prioritizing it. They could have Metallic Rebuke. Looks like they do. Disappointing. I could have played around that by spending a turn getting Halfling into play, but that seemed like such a waste of a turn when they have Urza Saga ticking up. But now it looks like it would have been smart. One of my best draws this turn is actually just land, because then I can Halfling plus Emperor, and Halfling plus the land represents Gatewatch on the next turn. Citadel. Okay, I did draw a land. The Shock in should be suspicious, but I still have to do it. 
Hopefully Wandering Emperor gets a big tasty blowout on a Construct in combat. Then I untap to play the Gatewatch and win easily. 7-7, seven, seven, Tutor, Boots, Land, and the third Saga. Okay. I'm not going to be able to exile the one that's holding the Boots. I can get the other one. Hope they don't have another Rebuke here. Or they can't cast it. It's fine. They can't have Rebuke here. Exile this Jerk which also shrinks the other jerk. I go to 10, and I'm ready to deploy. Come on, Gatewatch, show up. This is your time. The beacons of Gondor are lit, and Rohan will answer. Here we go. Two of the best. In they come. Am I worried about Trample out of this? Because Elspeth can minus to just kill this thing, or I can plus and make a shitload of Tinguses, and then if they can give this thing flying or Trample, it's bad for me. I think I'd rather just have a shitload of dinguses. And I'm going to plus to fairy first. Draw some cards. Planes. Disappointing. That doesn't cast my creature in my hand. Three one ones. Dingus army assemble. Give one of them plus one. Okay. Not bad. If there's a shadow spear in their deck, I'm in trouble. Make moth nexus. Okay. That's really good at holding cranial plating. Oh, we're just firing this thing up. Yikes. Why? Oh, because you could give it haste. Yep, makes sense. Makes perfect sense. That can kill Wandering Emperor. Or just do a bunch of damage to me. By a bunch of damage, I mean two poison. They could map onto it twice. I could take up to four poison this turn. They don't have enough mana to cranial plating and equip both Lava Spur Boots and that. Okay, thought Cast. Thought Monitor. Okay. Yeah, they didn't need the artifact for either of those affinity spells. And by casting all that, they gave up on a Saga Construct. Okay, we're just mapping onto this. Thoughtcast revealed and decided to keep it. Might as well attack. Jump with a 1-1, one, one, as is the plan. Okay. And tapping with the Planeswalkers again. Another busload of Planeswalkers. Lush Portico gives me some selection before I decide what the fairy's going to do. Reading Pool's not it. I can pitch Wandering Emperor, just delete her entirely to get rid of this construct. I'm going to Teferi first so I can make informed decisions. Windswept Heath, I hate you. How good is Wandering Emperor actually going to be? I think probably good enough to keep around. Plus one counter on Delighted Halfling, now it beats Frogmite straight up in combat. Make three Dinguses, play another Halfling, and I can attack with Thought with uh, Soldier and Delighted Halfling here. Still plenty of blockers, happy to trade off Soldier for Thought Monitor, and they don't get a trade on Halfling. It's just too big. Enormous Halfling. And I am worried. Maybe I was supposed to give more respect to Shadow Spear here. Okay, they don't have a Shadow Spear. Just another Springleaf Drum. Cranial Plating does win with Ink Moth Nexus, though. There's nothing I could do against that. None of the cards that I have or saw or could have had that turn matter against that. I would need Force of Vigor in my hand right now. Yeah, 13. Even if I killed the Construct, this is still 12. Okay. They found a Poison Line. This was a fun showcase for Deploy the Gatewatch, though. It did. We did actually get to 6. And start to flip a game where we're way behind and hit two cool planeswalkers. Not going to matter, though. Okay. Let's talk about this deck. We already talked about the mana. I think that you should just be committed to Plaza of Heroes, Delighted Halfling, Oath of Nyssa, Sylvan Caryatid to cast these splash spells. You have to choose a base color area to be in. And that base color area for this deck is green-white. We could say Bant if you want to build a three-color mana base. But I think Sacred Foundry is no good. And Godless Shrine is no good. You can still play Overgrown Tomb and Stomping Ground because they're green. But Shrine, Foundry, Plains out right away. I think we just want three Misty Rainforests in that spot. We could go two Misty Rainforests and a Hedge Maze, get another Surveil Land. If I had Hedge Maze... We could even just play more land straight up. Like Teferi who slows the sunset was just not good. And even just Planeswalker density, even though that matters with Deploy the Gatewatch, I think we should not be playing cards that we'd be embarrassed to spend four mana on. 
Now we're up to 23 lands and plus 4 green sources. I already think this deck is massively improved in the keepable hand range. The next iteration, which I'm not going to do here, but I think is worth exploring if you want to play to play the Gatewatch, is some version where you use cantrips and setup to play kind of a more normal deck with maybe like 10 or 12 planeswalkers in it instead of 19. And then you cut the worst planeswalkers and use stuff like preordain that can be normal magic cards when you need to just filter and find lands or find action. But then you could like preordain top top, leave something high power on top, and then deploy the gatewatch. Preordain isn't really good at setting that up because it doesn't last the turn. I don't know. You'd have to do a deep dive and figure out how we do that. But immediately fixing the mana base is going to make this deck a lot better. And then outside of that, the selection and interaction and what we're actually doing, this is that's a much bigger spectrum that I'm not going to spend time on here. Maybe playing something like Farewell would be worth doing. Because we're trying to get to six anyway. And there were a bunch of games where we got to six, but we were just so far behind it didn't matter. And if you could farewell, you could even have planeswalkers at play. Just choose everything except a planeswalker. It's just exile hordes and graveyards and creatures. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave this here. Improved mana base. If you want to continue working on this, figure out the spell balance. Uh, what the what the limit of how many planeswalkers you can play and still support to play the gate watch is i'm never afraid of an o5 i'm also not afraid to try something fun and a little different my only real negative critique of this deck was the mana base underneath all of it you have to be perfect with your execution of fundamental stuff because this sort of thing is already negative against established decks, just, you know, by structural definition of the rules of engagement of the format. So this stuff has to be correct, so you even have a chance to do this stuff. And that's the lesson from this one. Hopefully we've taken a big stride in that direction today. Abe, thank you for sharing this with us all. I hope everyone had fun. I did have fun. I love putting Bladeswalkers into play. That part was a lot of fun. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.